Yeah, hi all. Welcome to another session of Mock Interface with Ankit Jain. So this is me, Ankit Jain. So I'm a technical architect at NMNC. I'm 18x certified. I'm active in CXOS events. This is my LinkedIn URL. You can feel free to follow me or send connection request. And to be updated upon on the future sessions, you can join the WhatsApp group as well. This is the QR code for that. After receiving the request, we'll just message you around confirming your creation to Salesforce. So you can just mention like you are a Salesforce developer or you and what level of experience you have. Just that is enough. We just want to avoid spamming. So we ask few information. Okay. Next is if suppose uh, you want to have a one-to-one -one session with me, then you can book it on uh, TopMit. And we have a few of the earlier sessions recorded on our YouTube channel. Okay, you. Thank you, Jen. So this is the QR code for that. We have different, different playlists curated to the different, different content. Like we have one for the technical sessions. We have one for the mock interview and we have for the quick interview preparation where we focus mostly on the technical questions and uh, answering that. Technical sessions de uh, deal with the more granular uh, understanding of the topic like a synchronous apex like, uh, and the uh, platform events. So like this, there are various other topics as well. And we have recently started our LinkedIn page as well. So you can feel free to follow our LinkedIn page as well. This is the QR code for that. So today we have few of the, uh, today we have uh, two candidates who want, want to uh, take a mock interview for, with us. So I uh, will, uh, are getting started uh, with uh, candidate A. So candidate A, uh, so let's get started with a mock interview. So can you just uh, start with your brief introduction? Uh, good evening uh, to all of you. And uh, my name is Ankit Kumar and I have one year of experience as a Salesforce developer. I do job in Bangalore. There is a company. Yeah, uh, uh, let's start with your brief introduction. Yes. Uh, I am Ankit Kumar and uh, I have one year of experience as a Salesforce developer and uh, I have done uh, uh, work on a single project also. Uh, project name is uh, Bid Management 2.0 and uh, I have uh, good knowledge of Salesforce admin, LWC, SOCAL, social, uh, async, Apex, Apex classes. That's, uh, that is our brief introduction. Uh -huh. Uh, first thing, like, uh, well, you introduce, do you do your introduction? You have to talk about your holistic picture. Like, uh, first of all, you have to just mention your name. Like, what is my current designation? At what company? How much is the Salesforce experience? And if both are different, then you can see like out of like five years experience, I have like uh, one experience, relevant experience in Salesforce. Then you can mention about the uh, in the introduction. If like I see like you have not mentioned anything about LWC. LWC triggers and flows integration is a kind of necessity for in the interview. So, uh, for all the people like who are watching this interview, like, uh, unless you speak about these things, the uh, panel would definitely think like uh, he would at least a uh, kind of preset in your mind, in their mind that yes, we don't want to take this candidate forward because he doesn't uh, know about LWC flows and uh, integration. Also like uh, right now looking at the market, what I have observed is like we don't mean any one cloud, at least you should have understanding. And that uh, talking about that in the inter in the introduction itself is very much important. So uh, uh, candidate A, uh, uh, like you have knowledge on the LWC and or uh, you're yet to, you're learning that one. Yeah, I have uh, good knowledge of LWC and I'm gradually learning. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's get started with the uh, LWC topic first. Can you tell me like what are the advantages of using LWC? LWC have many advantages as it's a modern programming language and it have many advantages over Aura. Uh, it's a framework, uh, it's a JavaScript framework and uh, for it's uh, for uh, uh, it have a uh, good rendering time uh, than Aura and uh, there is uh, one major advantage than Aura LWC have uh, is that uh, it have uh, decorators that is a great advantage than Aura and uh, 
the good thing about lwc is that it have uh, less bundled files it have only 3 to 4 5 3 to 4 files uh, but or i have uh, more, uh, at, i think that have seven files in bundle so lwc have a more advantage and it is in on demand than aura we can work on lwc you know, vs code and uh, that uh, other advantage may be say that uh, lwc is open source uh, platform uh, uh, language and uh, it have good integration capabilities also Yes, that is all about LWC. Uh, actually, uh, the expected answer would uh, have, well, you covered few points, but uh, I would say like instead of uh, uh, just uh, saying like in a vague manner, let's be specific. What you're talking about is first thing is the rendering time or you can say performance that you rightly said like it is uh, much more faster than Aura and you have to explain that like why? Because it is based on the web component framework of the browser. So the browser natively understands whatever is whatever code that in the HTML we write in the LWC component. So the translation time is less. Second is you have to talk about model, modularity. Modularity it is much more modular than Aura because here you can have like you can use multiple con Webex controllers and call the methods as well. Also, you can embed one LWC inside another LWC. And the third advantage you can talk about is security. Security wise, LWC is much more powerful than Aura because it has shadow DOM concept. Like you can en encapsulate your actual DOM inside the layer. So external CSS and JS won't apply to it directly. You have to use the word specific LWC methods, then only you would be able to access it. The next part is like uh, Sethu's investing uh, mostly on LWC. Uh, so uh, like uh, going down the path, like uh, there are no enhancements that we can expect in the aura, but in the LWC we'll uh, definitely see much more enhancements that are coming up. And you can uh, say like uh, LWC is like, uh, uh, it, since it's browser based, so you can use any other, uh, your JavaScript framework, like in your, with your regular, it is also, you can use the LWC components. So uh, when we talk about like why we use LWC, you have to discuss all these topics. Uh, talking about like different files and all doesn't add really much value. What you have to consider is the important factors. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, and uh, other part is like, uh, can you tell me like uh, you mentioned about the decorators. So can you tell me what are decorators that are available in LWC? Decorators are the extra functionality that is added in LWC and generally uh, what we can say that uh, I have used uh, three decorators uh, generally uh, at the rate API, at the rate wire uh, and uh, at the rate track. So if I uh, talk about uh, wire service that is uh, inbuilt service in LWC to read SFDC backend data and it's a reactive service. Reactive, the reactive words uh, meaning here that it's a request based when need and uh, when need data, it fetch the data. So this is built on completely uh, all LDS also. That is that is a programming based methods actually. It use, uh, uh, wire is used in JS class to read data. So uh, wire is available in, UI API namespace and its uh, work is to retrieve the data, not writing. Uh, writing, I think, will be available soon. So, and uh, there are two steps in wire service. Uh, first is importing wire adapter, and second is wire decorator. In importing wire ad adapter, we use import keyword like import wire from LWC. And uh, the wire service consists of uh, uh, adapter ID that is like a identifier and that is just a ID generated when we import wire. Another thing is adapter module uh, that is pre-written program uh, and, uh, and adapter configuration. This is the place where uh, you pass the data at the rate wire, method name, parameter and where to store the data. So. 
uh, wire uh, wire service can be write in a program by two ways. It's uh, first is property base wire by property and second is wire by function. Second decorator uh, is at the rate API API decorator that is used to fetch the data. Sorry, sorry. Uh, second uh, the second is uh, I will talk uh, about wire to track first. Uh, track uh, uh, decorator is used to track the changes in LWC field or variables for a private property. Uh, yes, track is just used to track changes, to track changes in LWC field or variables. Okay. And uh, yeah. Uh, at at the rate API is just used to fetch the data from the server. Oh no, no, sorry. At the rate API is used in parent to child and child to parent relationship when we want to expose a variable or a method. Uh, at the time we use at the rate API annotation. Okay, so I would say like whatever you explained was uh, right, but it was for uh, too much comprehensive and. Uh, why way you are explaining it the panel might uh, i would say uh, lose the patience as well so he might try to cut you in uh, so what you have to be uh, say is like when you talk about decorators you have to just mention about uh, the three decorators at the rate wire at the rate track at the rate api at the rate api is for uh, making a property publicly available at the rate wire is for getting the data at the rate track is making the properties reactive, which are not reactive by default. Primitive data types are reactive by default. Other user defined data type or arrays, you have to make it reactive explicitly. For that purpose, we use at the rate track. Okay, sir. Thank you. The next thing is around like how do you do communication between various LWC components? Uh, there may be many use cases for LWC communication, like uh, when we want to uh, make a communication between parent to child. Second use case may be child to parent. And third uh, use case may be when we want to make a communication between unrelated components within application. And fourth case may be when we want to make a communication between components across the framework. And there may be another case uh, when we want to make a communication between siblings, like A, a is parent and B and C is child. So we want to make a communication between B and C. So there may be five use case when we talk about communication in components. Yes, sir. Okay, but how do you are talking about me, sir? You just talked about like how do you do like you know discussed it. So what is actually expected when we talk about this question is one minute just. Yeah, so when we are discussing about different scenarios of communication, you have to talk about parent to my first year scenario is parent to child. Parent to child means you can use attributes, you can use that rate API in your child component and for the parent you can pass it as an attribute. Second is child to parent, yes. child to parent, you have to talk about like custom events. Third scenario I is can, like... I can explain also, but... Uh, uh, okay, so that is what is expected like when you talk about like these are the use cases like that doesn't uh, add value like, uh, okay, you can take tell about these scenarios, yeah, these mechanisms, yeah. Okay, sir. You can sir ask me in uh, any one uh, scenario. Uh, I uh, told you about five scenario. Okay, so ask... okay, tell me about like uh, unrelated components. How do you do the uh, communication? There may be two methods uh, when we talk about unrelated components. Uh, the first is pub sub, that is public subscribe method, and uh, second is uh, LMS, that is Lightning Message Service. So when we talk about unrelated components, so there may be two use cases that, uh, that uh, first is across the framework. And uh, in that case, we will use LMS. And when we, uh, when we will use within application, we will use LWC PubSub. So whenever 
वन कॉम्पोनेंट वॉन्ट टू टॉक टू अदर कॉम्पोनेंट विद इन एप्लीकेशन पबसअप इज ए शेयरिंग फाइल we can download it that is uh, that have no template and xml it have only .js file so there may be one publisher and other is sub subscriber and both are just like uh, parent there is no relations uh, like parent child so it's like uh, an application event uh, another method that uh, is uh, usable in lms uh, for communication Salesforce. This is Salesforce inbuilt service to communicate across the framework. Uh, we create a message channel that uh, must stand should include suffix like message channel dot meta dot xml. That is a common file. Second thing is that publish it on a message channel, and third is subscribe it and unsubscribe it from a message channel. So we can make a communication between Aura to LWC to Visual Force. just just like a cycle so L lms have uh, actually is in beta also uh, it have great impact on lwc because we are making a communication across the framework that is a great advantage that may be okay yeah so important part is like uh... always when you have option of lwc and uh, pubsub you'll have to always go with lms salesforce says like suppose what scenarios you can't achieve with lms then only go with uh, pubsub now okay. in the now in the interest of time like i will have to switch to a uh, candidate m like hi candidate m uh, uh, can you just give a brief introduction about yourself your experience level and your salesforce experience yeah hello ankit how are you yeah i'm fine yeah ah, so first of all thank you for giving me this opportunity i i am candidate m i am currently working as a salesforce developer in abc company i have total 2 uh, years 2.3 years of experience as of now and i have done my btech in it from abc university and currently i am holding one certification that is salesforce developer one certification and apart from the the salesforce i am having uh, aws certification as well and i have scheduled two ai certifications for future and uh, till now i have worked on two projects that are based on sales and service cloud <clears throat> so till now i have worked on two clouds only that are sales and cl service cloud so in my previous project i was working like as a admin as well as the developer so at that part i was working as like uh, in the uh, triggers part as well as on the batch classes and apart from the customization in the configuration part i was managing the security as well as i have worked on flows like screen flows and record record triggered flows and i have also created reports and dashboards in my previous projects and in my current project i am working uh, like in the triggers and the batch classes in the customization part and in the configuration part i am working uh, for the reports and dashboards only okay so it's all about me in the brief so if you want to ask anything else you can ask yeah uh, so i would say like uh, it was uh, relatively better what i would say is uh, uh, instead of talking about like uh, these skill set and the inside the project you can just say it outside the project as well you can just say in the like your introduction should be very brief it should okay. hardly take 2 minutes If my okay. name is like candidate M. I am having two years of experience in Salesforce. Uh, my skill set includes flows, LWC reports, and dashboard. Uh, and uh, I worked on the profile permission sets. I worked on the reports and dashboard. I worked on triggers, process build, uh, triggers, batch classes, queuable, batchable, and uh, I worked specifically on sales and service cloud. If you want, I would like to elaborate on uh, and uh, LWC and flows. Oh, If you want, I would like to talk about my project. Simple. Yeah. The more, cool. yeah. The more you take the, it actually uh, might be chances like few panel might get uh, uh, feeling like it's like far too much. So focusing yeah. on whatever you say becomes a little difficult for the panel. So they just kind of ignore whatever you are saying and they just silently listen. So if it is brief and then you talk about like whether you if the panel wants you to discuss on the project, then you say. 
otherwise the panel would go in the direction he wants but mostly they would want to listen to the project that you have worked on so uh, yeah so since you mentioned around the project you have implemented sales and service cloud uh, can you tell me about like uh, what does a typical sales process look like uh like the sales cloud you yeah are talking sales about cloud, yeah sales cloud typical sales cycle so the typical sales cycle we can say like uh, it depends like the first first of all the thing is like there is a there is a marketing like if we are trying to uh, like process anything like if we are uh, selling something so currently we are uh, selling the services so what we can do is like uh, we can create the campaigns through those campaigns we can uh, get the leads and after the leads uh, we are getting we can uh, like convert those leads to our contacts and accounts like all these and after that they are converted so we can uh, like create process automations like uh, uh, web to lead, web to lead so that uh, it can be easier for them to uh, easier for uh, us to get the leads directly from the web and like uh, several other automations like uh, we can create for those not talking about automations so what typically when you ask about the typical sales process how does it uh, uh, what exactly uh, uh, happens in the typical sales cycle is like it starts with the marketing where you talked about the campaigns that's right and we get leads out of it so from leads itself our sales cycle starts so we get leads from multiple sources like through web to lead form or from other mechanisms from different different sites like public websites or uh, uh, through other channels as well. And then what we do is like we nurture, we qualify them and uh, uh, see like whatever are the leads, like since there will be too many leads, but uh, the actual which meets our criteria uh, would be very few. So we would nurture those and then we will qualify those. Which are the leads like we are qualified, we then convert it into account contact opportunity, opportunity being optional. Now the agent works on the opportunities and an agent wants to close this opportunity so that the revenue is generated. So for uh, sometimes like for a few of the products like uh, uh, it's P2B business, then the, the uh, uh, person wants to have a quote for that or for a high value product like motorbike or something, they would ask for multiple quotations as well. So from opportunity, you create two different, different quotations. Then uh, when, once a uh, uh, quotation is approved, then you uh, close the opportunity and then you create an order. Then from order, you have the, like for that product, you create the order products as well. And then uh, you might generate a contract or not. That would depend on your uh, requirement. But this is how a typical sales cycle works when you are asked about. It almost covered few of the things that you already spoke of, but this is how like a crystal clear, it's clearly evident to the panel, like how does it work? Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned around uh, like the sales cloud you worked on. Can you tell me about uh, like uh, what are the, the different uh, uh, in the opportunity? Like, can you tell me about what is the significance of forecast categories? Uh, significance of forecast. Actually, I don't know about it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so an opportunity like we are the stage value under stage like we are different, different percentage values like 15 percent, 10 percent, uh, which denotes like the chances of getting converted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have like for each stage we are defined like what is the forecast setting like it is omitted, it's like in pipeline or it's close completed like that. There are different values that are uh, available. So uh, you have to uh, focus on uh, talk about this uh, stuff. Okay. 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 Fine. Yeah. Like so, all those like uh, close loss, close one, like all. No, 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 no. You don't have to talk about stage in the values. These are like forecast categories. They are the categories like means it's okay, like like, uh, the pipeline. Uh, like like yeah pipeline that is there yeah. and you have omitted as well. You have the best case as well. Like it's closed. So like these, like these are configured at the opportunity level, opportunity stage, you have these values. Okay. 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 The next thing uh, is around like you worked, you said like you worked on the flows, right? Uh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, so uh, have you done the sending of email uh, through flows anytime? Uh, yes, I have done one. 
so just tell me like while sending an email from the flow like uh, suppose i want to send it to a group email address mm -hmm. so yeah how so what uh, configuration i should select uh so or how would you do it let, let me rephrase it like uh we can create a group of users no group email address like uh uh, we also call it as DL sometime. Uh, group uh, uh, group email addresses are there in like suppose you have a requirement of sending the emails to suppose a DevOps group uh, email address. Yeah. Or a list of admins you have you want to notify them. So how would you do that? Like what is the configuration that you do? Uh, like first. I will uh, like I will create an email template. Mm. No, I'm not talking about email template. Uh, email template would assume like these are already done, and from the flow you have to send the email. So under so flow email uh, flow send email action, what is the property that you will utilize for sending a email to a group email address? I'm not sure about it. Okay, so uh, under the flow, we have a sender type as a field that is available under which there are different values that are available. Like one is like default workflow action. So another value is like your awkward email address. And uh, there is like a specific email address that you can uh, mention in. So what you have to do is like you have to create a OWA awkward email address. Uh, with that okay. email address where you want to send and then you have to select the awkward email address and also you have to assign this to your particular profile because uh, like in the awkward email address you have option like for which, which which profiles these will be enabled okay. so, so and then you use it in the send email, email uh, in the sender type configuration of the uh, flow okay oh, fine thank you okay how do you do a uh, uh, synchronous operation using flow Synchronous operation. Asynchronous, asynchronous, asynchronous. So for that we can use like uh you're talking about the calling of Apex into flow. I'm talking about asynchronous operation, simple. No worries. Like uh in the flow, like uh, you have option of uh, selecting asynchronous path as well. So okay. what? So which works like a future method? Like after the transition is committed, like you get the option of asynchronous. So here you can do whatever you want. Like suppose you have a requirement of sending doing an API call, or you want to delay a particular transaction, or open a separate thread. So you yes. can use asynchronous operation uh, checkbox in such scenarios. Okay. 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 Uh, so tell me, like uh, in your order of execution, whether uh, Flow gets called first or a trigger gets called first? So in the order of ex execution, the flow will be called first. Actually, the question itself was incomplete. I wanted you to uh, point out that. That would, your answer should be, that would depend whether it is before or after. If it is a before, then before flow would get called first. Yeah. Then the before the trigger gets called. But if it is after scenario, then your triggers get called first, then your flow gets called okay okay that is why you're, you should be very much attentive right like it might happen like the question itself is invalid yeah. and the panel is trying to play tricks on you so granularize your or i would say box the requirement first okay okay yeah uh you mentioned around uh, like uh you worked on the different apex classes as well so can you tell yeah. me about uh, the different uh, uh with sharing without sharing and inherited sharing okay so basically like we have uh with sharing like if uh, like by default the apex classes runs in system mode so if we want to enforce like the record level settings so uh like if we want to apply the current user uh, uh sharing to that uh, apex class so we will use with sharing class and uh we can use uh, without sharing like if we don't want to enforce any record level uh, sharing settings so we can use without sharing and inherited sharing like it depends on the runtime like whether it will be uh, like uh, with sharing or without sharing
uh, see, uh, there is a catch in that. Uh, where inherited sharing, like you have the inherited keyword on that. So from where it is called, up, suppose it is uh, called from uh, uh, without sharing, then it will be run in without sharing. Otherwise, by default, it works in with sharing only. And if suppose nothing is mentioned, then it works in without sharing. Nothing is mentioned. Okay. Inherited is a uh, the scenario, and with if nothing is mentioned, that is a, another different scenario. Imp that okay. is important. Okay. Okay. Uh, how do you enforce like uh, DML uh, uh, the user level restrictions in your DMLs in the Apex? Like suppose uh, you write uh, the insert uh, suppose insert account. You want yeah. to make sure like only the if I have the access to insert, then only I should be able to insert. Uh, the account records how do i ensure it or it is already taken care uh, like i didn't get the question exactly can you please uh, yeah so suppose you uh, suppose there's a custom controller okay, okay. where you are at there's a form like lwc component where you are want to insert an account okay, okay. now inside that uh, uh, so in the controller whenever you're writing that line insert account instance like that account uh, variable that you have created in which is the instance of an account object you want yeah. to save it. So you want okay. to make sure like suppose if uh, make sure like only if I have the access of uh, inserting the account, then only I should be able to insert. Otherwise, it should throw me an error. So how do you make sure like this happens or it is already being enforced by Salesforce? No, no. So for that, we have to use like uh, insert as user. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. By default, it does not uh, do that. And it is a recent en enhancement. So that is good. Uh, yeah, one on uh, one tip, like always be prepared with your uh, latest release notes, at least at a high level, like uh, from Salesforce when you get some newsletters as well about latest features. So you can just have a quick glance because the panel might ask you like, what are the recent uh, announcements that you are there in the Salesforce? So at least one or two features you should be able to speak about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the next part is like, uh, have you uh, in the accounted contact, like what is the relationship? Is it a lookup or is it a master detail? Uh, so basically like it is a, like we can say it is a special type of relationship. So basically the relationship between account and contact is lookup only, but, uh, it, uh, like in the back end, it is working as a master detail. So it is like a lookup with cascade delete functionality. Yeah, that's true. Uh, tell me about the security model of Salesforce. So basically like in uh, Salesforce, there are four types of security. Like uh, we have organization level security in which like we manage a list of all authorized users. Like uh, we can set the IP ranges. We can uh, restrict them. Uh, like uh, we can use password policies and all. And in all men, uh, like if we are doing anything like we are doing for the whole org using the organization level security and then the object level security comes, which comes under the profile level security. So in that, uh, we basically, uh, do the CRUD operations. Like, uh, we give CRUD permissions to the users and in the field level security, uh, we give the field access to the users. And the last comes the record level security in which there are four types of security, like OWD, uh, sh uh sharing rules, manual sharing and uh, role hierarchy. So in OWD, OWD, there are also five types, like there are private, public, uh, public, uh, yeah, yeah, public, uh, private, uh, public read only, public, public read, read only, write, public read write, read write, controlled by parent, controlled by parent and public read write transfer. Yeah. Transfer is available only for specific use cases, only like, uh, for only for lead, 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 lead and case. Yeah. And uh, there is also like camp, uh, by campaign member for campaign member only. Okay. For the campaign. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, in this the important part uh, uh, that I would say you missed is around uh, this uh, under sharing rules. Uh, yeah, sharing rules. You have to talk about like three types are there. First is yeah. uh, criteria based, owner, owner based, based, and guest mm -hmm. sharing rule. Yeah. Okay, and actually there's another one, uh, which is your restriction rule as well. Uh, okay. Restriction rule is for uh, removing the access. It doesn't add access, but instead removes it. Restriction access. 
restriction rules it is called okay so it comes under sharing rules only no it's a separate one but it is uh, controls the your uh, sharing and visibility right okay okay and uh, you miss the apex manage sharing yeah i missed that also okay the next part uh, uh, is uh, around your lwc like uh, can you tell me about uh, the imperative calling and at the rate wire differences so like basically if we are using at the rate wire so we are calling like it is always like uh, at the rate cacheable true so if we are using at the rate wire so we are calling uh, the data from the cache okay so uh, we don't have to go to the uh, like the database again and again so we can directly get it get the data from the cache memory but if we are using imperative so we have to go to the database uh, to fetch the data but if we mark it as uh, at the rate cacheable true so we can uh store the data in the cache memory also and in wire we cannot do dml operations but in uh, imperative method we can do dml operations as well uh why in the first place we do imperative calling yeah why do we do imperative calling uh like uh, uh like if we like if there is something like uh that is updating again and again no so no 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 it doesn't work like that you're going in the wrong direction let me just uh, uh, answer that for you uh, so basically imperative calling is like uh, any user defined action that is happening or the user wants to do a particular action and you want to do any apex call or to fetch the data that time it is uh, imperative calling uh like uh suppose a bed like a button click it might be like what a user is doing any action and based on that you want to do a particular update or uh, fetch the data okay oh, otherwise like at the rate where it has its own life cycle so it would follow the same pattern like uh, after your uh, constructor your uh, connected callback then it uh, would get called then you have the rendered callback and so on oh, okay. yeah yeah so if you want uh, like if you want as per the user so we will go for imperative yeah whenever a user defined action like be it like a button click or you can say a scroll or whatever you want you can consider it any scenario whether user okay. is actually defining like what he wants to on a particular click of a button or particular action he wants to do that okay 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 fine fine okay yeah 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 got it thank you Mm, do you know about the life cycle uh, hooks of LWC? Ah, uh, yeah, I know. So, like, it comes like if you are talking about like uh, going from parent to child, so it will be like uh, first of all the constructor will be called on the parent, and after uh, after that, like it will check the if there are any public properties that needs to be updated. If yes, then it will update. Otherwise, the uh, parent will be inserted into the DOM. After that, the connected callback. will be called on the parent and then the parent will get rendered and after that uh, the child will uh, the constructor will be called on the child and after that again it will check that if there are any pub public property needs to be uh, updated so if yes then it will update otherwise the chi child will also get inserted into the dom so connected callback will be called on child and then the child will also get rendered and then the uh rendered callback will be called on the child and then the rendered callback will be called on the parent and then the life cycle is completed and when uh, we are talking about getting out of the dom so uh, like the disconnected callback will be called on the parent first then that parent will get out of the dom and then the uh, disconnected callback will be called on the child and then the child will get out of the dom so after that the error callback will be called okay uh now in the interest of time like uh, uh we'll have to switch to candidate ab uh uh yeah hi candidate ab so uh, you want to uh, have the mock interview right now yes okay uh, just you can tell me about your experience level and your skill set so that should be fine in the interest of time Hello, Ankit. Uh, 
I'm a fresher, Ankit. Uh, I'm a recent graduate, twenty twenty four passer. Okay. I want I want to start my career in Salesforce. Okay, okay, okay. I have complete I have complete my internship, which was on uh, uh, smart smart interns. I okay. have completed JDI Salesforce. Okay. I got uh, I got PD one certification voucher also. I need to schedule the exam. Okay. I have good knowledge on admin topics. Okay. Under development also. Currently, I'm learning uh, uh, develop Apex and uh, LWC. Okay. Tell me about uh, what is your rapper class? Have you heard about rapper classes? No, okay. Okay. Uh, can you tell me about uh, uh, S objects? S object, have you heard about? Yeah, yeah. S object is a Salesforce standard object. Okay. Yeah. It is a predefined object in Salesforce. There is another object called a, a, a custom object, but there are, uh, we need to customize the object. Subjects are uh, like uh, opportunities, contacts, accounts. These are the uh, subjects in Salesforce, so on. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell me about, uh, like, uh, how do you delete a user in Salesforce? How to? How do you delete it. a user in Salesforce? Oh, okay. Salesforce. Okay. We cannot, we cannot delete a user. We can, uh, Deactivate the user only. I think. As of my knowledge, actually, there are two options either you can deactivate or you can freeze it. Uh, the in this, there are two options like uh, if you are supposed deactivating, then the license gets freed. If it is like uh, just freezing, then the license is still consumed. You cannot assign that license to another user. Okay. Okay. Tell me like, what is the different core differences between profile and permission set? I don't know. Thank you. You completed internship, right? Profile and yeah. permission set. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so profile actually what it does is like, uh, a profile is like a type of user. Normally, earlier it used to denote like the pro at the object level field level. What are the permissions that has to happen? We have to configure that in the profile level. But going down the line, like Salesforce has the plans to move those things into the permission set only, and the profile would be only used for a page layout assignment, your IP, uh, uh, IP login hours, and your default record types that are available. Okay. And the default apps that you want to set it up. Uh, okay. Other than that, all the other things that are there in like your profile of your object level, field level permissions and all would be have handled in the permission set. Record type access also would be governed at the permission set level only. Profile will okay. just control the default tabs and default record types. Others, all the things would be and the IP hours. Other than that, all the most of the things would be configured at the permission set level going down the line. And a person can have like one profile and uh, he can have multiple permission sets as well. Okay. The next thing is around, uh, can you tell me about the, uh, have you heard about object class? In Apex? Object. Yeah, that is a, that is a yeah, object class. It's a generalized concept of uh, object oriented programming. Yeah. Can you tell me, like, uh, suppose I have the requirement of uh, uh, impl implementing uh, sorting in any class, like uh, consider around uh, from a Java perspective or any object oriented programming, like, uh, do you know, like, which interface you would want to Im uh, implement to uh, use sorting? Use sorting? Yeah, implement sorting, I mean. So by using SOQL and SOS. 
No, 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 that is not needed. Uh, like suppose you create a implement comparable interface. Have you heard about comparable interface? Uh, no, no, Ankit. I You have have done your bachelor's in which branch? computer science. In computer science branch, they didn't teach you around comparator interface, it seems. Okay, in the Java as well, it, it is available. It's not something specific to Apex. Okay. No worries. At the fresher level, actually, it would be talked about uh, mostly the database concepts like, do you know about uh, uh, asset property? Asset property. Yeah, have you heard about it? Yeah. Okay, what is that? Atomicity, consistency, integrity. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, integrity and uh... The last one uh, I do forget. Uh, D is uh, for uh, durability, I guess. Durability. Yeah. So, like uh, considering you're a fresher, mostly things would be around the basic uh, part only. And I would say, like, uh, uh, you have to like uh, considering like you have done the internship in salesforce uh, you yeah. have to work a little uh, harder i would say uh, yeah. you would have to learn a lot of things around the basic uh, stuff itself like the wrapper classes the, and the, all the, inter the internship is about a uh, totally on trail here okay, okay. the but it yeah, is like these are in the user management trailer it is available uh, i would say i would say like you have to spend time on this and uh, uh, you can practice it using apex sandbox.io like the problem solving around the apex triggers and other related stuff at the back end that might yeah. help you a lot for practicing okay okay, okay. and lwc and all are like uh, you would have to no, yeah. I have basic knowledge on time, theoretical knowledge. Okay. Did you not create any practice project by your own? By using uh, YouTube, I am, I am, um, right now I'm trying to build it by using you. Uh, okay. When was, yeah. uh, I would say like practice a hands-on project, like you can use Trailhead as well. Trailhead also okay. has some sample projects, I think. So try it or you, you can complete a super batch on LWC. That would be helpful. Okay. okay. Right now I didn't complete it. Okay, I, I will complete. Yeah, for interviews, that would be the core important part. Without that, uh, there is no need surviving in the sales. So it is almost impossible without learning LWC. Oh, what, oh, what are the main topics for pressures? For freshers, uh, you would uh, need to know about the SMEs, the database concepts, and the uh, oh. OOPs concepts. And then you would need at least the uh, your LWC flows and all. It's like quite basic. So at the fresh level as well, it might be expected around like knowing around the uh, LWC flows at least and triggers. Yeah, triggers. Yeah. Before and after. Yeah, there are others as uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, these are the high level, yes. But uh, then uh, you grow at the ground level, there are much more things. Okay. Okay. Mm, now, in the interest of time, like I will have to switch to candidate S. Uh, like, hi, candidate S, uh, can you tell me about uh, your total experience and your skill set? Uh, candidate S. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi, Ankit. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, can you just tell me about your total experience and your skill set? Yeah, I'm Shreya Kumari and I have three years of experience as a Salesforce developer. Sorry, not three years, two years of experience as a Salesforce developer. And I did three certifications, PD1, Admin, and Associates. And uh, I also worked on Admin and Development part and the Deployment part. And uh, that's all about for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, me always highlight like any specific clouds if you have worked on. Yeah, like... uh, in sales, in sales cloud. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so in the sales cloud, uh, have you worked on uh, web to lead? 
Yes, I worked on Web to Lead. Okay, tell me like in the Web to Lead, like uh, what are the steps that you do while configuring the Web to Lead form? Yeah, actually, first, uh, uh, first we I uh, go to in setup uh, setup window and uh, write a lead Web to Lead, and uh, there's uh, some leads and I created and I didn't added the some fields and all. And uh, they created after the clicking the submit button, they created a form, a form of uh, uh, form of wave, and you can put on the websites and all. Uh, after that, you are uh, writing, uh, filling the uh, all of these and things, and then you click on submit button. Then you can see the lead is created on your org. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Tell me your support, your sales process is configured at which object? Which is configured on the lead or on the account? Yeah, hello. Yeah. Yeah, actually your sound is picking. In yeah, middle. okay. Yeah, I'm saying like uh, your sales process is configured at the lead level or at the account level? Yeah, uh, sales process is on the lead level. First lead is started and then lead is converted in a content opportunity and contact after that. Sales process, sales process. Yeah, sales process is started from the lead. No, I'm talking about the sales process configuration, like uh, that you create the business process inside the sales force as well, right? Of the sales. Okay, on, the, on, the, on the opportunity we have, no, like on the sales process, like suppose whenever you have to define the new the sales process, you go to the opportunity and then you create a different business processes, right? Uh, sorry, support, uh, yeah. sales processes. Yeah. So I was asking about that, uh, the sales process configuration part. Okay. Uh, no worries. Like yeah. on the uh, sales process part, uh, can you tell me about uh, like in the Suppose I have the requ uh, requirement, means I have a lead which is converted. Uh, my sales rep has already converted that lead. Now he's not able to figure, find out in the lead. So what could be the reason? There was a lead earlier, like say by the name uh, 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 R or uh, Randy. Now uh, Randy is converted into account content opportunity, but he's not able to see that uh, Randy in the lead uh, list view. So what could be the reason? Actually, when lead is converted, uh, that uh, uh, the lead name is Randy, and when the lead is converted, they uh, they convert it in three objects: object uh, like account opportunity and contacts. Then there's a Randy that is not available. They convert it. So then. So is the Randy lead deleted from the org? No, they converted. Okay, so in the org, uh, if I search like uh, in the SOQ, will it be available? Actually, I never checked that, so I don't have an idea. It is available. You can do okay. that. Yeah, a lead is available. Okay, now tell me like uh, if suppose I don't, how do I have the ID? I do. How do I get the ID of the lead that is converted? Actually, I can't recall right now. I forgot that. You have the fields on the lead, like when it is converted, like you get on the lead, you can do the is converted check using is converted the checkbox. Yeah, uh, okay, okay. There's a some checkbox and yeah, the, the, yeah, you yeah. can get the ideas. And... Yeah, and then from yeah. the account, now the cross question, like suppose our lead is converted, do you want to figure out the related uh, account contact opportunity IDs? Uh, are those available? Can I, is there any way that uh, I can directly search from the search from it? Suppose early uh, Randy is converted into account contact and opportunity. And I uh, yeah. I don't know like what are the account contact opportunities like uh, which has been created by uh, means which are of Randy. So how do I search by if I search for it in the SOQL? I, From, I, I suppose that you are, is using using of that checkbox. They can 
that would Can give me the, just the lead ID. I want the uh, opportunity account at contact ID. Okay. I have no idea. On that uh, lead itself, you have the converted account ID, converted contact ID, and converted opportunity ID field. Okay. That gets populated by default by Salesforce. Okay. Mm, no worries. The next part is like, suppose I have the requirement of, uh, uh, how do I make a field required in Salesforce? Consider all the scenarios. Yeah. Okay, so first one also is when you creating a there's a check. Your voice is breaking, your voice is breaking too much. Yeah, yeah, no, it's better. Yeah, you can continue on your answer. Yeah, yeah, so in the first, yeah, first scenario, I was first scenario is that when you're creating a face. Then you can see in the fields. Uh, uh, then you can see there the one checkbox that is a required checkbox. When you are check that checkbox, the field is auto. Uh, the field is automatically uh, is required. And second thing is you can uh, use from the trigger. And uh, third thing, I think no both two things. So there are other mechanisms as well. First is your basic while creating a field. Second is through the page layout. Third is through the dynamic forms. Fourth is through your uh, before flow. And uh, in the flow, you can use the custom custom editor. Validation rule. Yeah, fifth I was about uh, to say validation yeah. rule as well, yeah. Yeah, validation. Yeah, that is also there. And you also yeah. have custom errors in flow so that you can use to make a field okay. required. Okay. Uh, the next uh, question is around uh, on the uh, uh, how, suppose I have the requirement uh, of uh, get, I mean, tell me like uh, technically how do I distinguish whether it's a uh, I have the name of a uh, uh, I have a name I don't know whether it's a public group or a queue at the database level are both uh, different stored in different objects so is it the same object? Public group and queues. Uh, we know, I know that public group and uh, queues, queues uh, where we are, uh, uh, where we are adding the, uh, adding the lots of users for that. And in uh, public group, is, we are doing same thing, but we are assigning the, there's a, some silly difference between that. We can assign the user in public group, but in queue, we can't assign the, in, we can't assign the owner in, in that group. In, in queue. The, what are you saying is right. Uh, the question was uh, mm -hmm. slightly different at the database level. At the database level, both are stored as group only. And a group, you have the type equal to queue. Have you queried any time any queue? No. I don't know. Uh, it's like same only like at the So what we do is like in the query, like select ID from group where type equal to queue. That is how we uh, retrieve the queue. Okay. Otherwise, for the public select ID from group where name equal to whatever API name that you have. Uh, and uh, the difference is actually very much important around public group and queues. Uh, so yeah. public group uh, is actually for giving access to the people. Uh, for uh, It's more around giving the access. Queues is, is around uh, sharing the load. Through yeah. public, so through public groups, actually, what you do is like you can give a uh, access of a, uh, your uh, list view to um, other people. You can use public groups in your sharing rules, yeah. and uh, and two, you can make a owner of a record as a queue or a user only. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, that is the most uh, means. These are the important differences. The next is around. Uh, uh, Apex Managed Sharing, are you aware of about Apex Managed Sharing? Yes. Uh, tell me, uh, uh, so, uh, tell me uh, like uh, at the, uh, in the share, Apex Managed Sharing, what does the sharing reason or row cause uh, uh, values, uh, uh, what is the value of the default value of row cause or sharing reason? Default yeah, value. Actually, 
actually uh, i only worked on with sharing and uh, without sharing so okay I, yeah uh, it is manual by default to the bio sharing rocos <laughs> is always manual okay even when you click uh, you have that uh, sharing icon that is a, a button that is available on your uh, record detail page that time as well like in the beneath it is creating a uh, object share records only with the rocos equal to manual Okay. The next part is uh, around uh, you have have you implemented any trigger framework? All right. Yes, we have worked on only uh, trigger. We have worked on only LWC parts, not so trigger. So we are um, we are generally creating our handle class, and uh, after that we are calling the uh, triggers on the handler. Okay. Can you tell me, like, uh, suppose uh, you get recursion in triggers, what do you do to overcome that? Actually, uh, for that, uh, first I created a Boolean uh, Boolean variable. Then I, if uh, if it is true, then, I, then you can apply this trigger. And if this is false, then you can uh, stop the trigger. Okay. Can you, do you know yeah. what is the what is the shortcoming of this approach? Yeah, I. What is the shortcoming, or what is the drawbacks of this approach? Maybe, maybe some uh, sometimes. Uh, after two hundred records, it would fail. Yeah, yeah. After two hundred records, maybe. Sometimes it fail. Okay. So, what are the other uh, mechanisms? Mm -hmm. Also, oh, yeah. you can. Also, we can create a uh, no, sorry, yeah, please explain. Yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah. there are other mechanisms as well. First is the very basic Boolean, but that fails after 200 records. Second is uh, using a set of IDs, like whichever have been processed, you put them in a set. Third is okay. using a map ID, comma object. Again, same approach, you can check like whether those records have been processed or not. Fourth and the best one is like comparing with the old map, like comparing like whether your logic should execute on which uh, fields. Then you check like these values are only changed, then you make the logic execute. Okay. And then you follow the trigger framework. So along with the comparing the old map, that would make sure like uh, recursion is not happening in. Okay. Uh, uh, suppose you are getting uh, CPU time limit uh, errors. What do you uh, mean? Uh, uh, what could be the possible reasons for that? Can you repeat again? Uh, what uh, suppose you are getting CPU time limit uh, errors? What could be the okay. reason for that? Maybe we are doing so many as uh, SOQL queries. So then, no, no. Uh, maybe the code executions. Uh, um, more than fifty and uh, more than fifty thousand milliseconds for for loading, then we are getting a CPU time with us. Uh, the reason code is execution. Code yeah. execution time. Yeah, so uh, yeah. CPU time limit execution happens because the synchronous apex, yeah. like after ten seconds, if the code executes. Then it uh, throws the uh, uh, error yes, of CPU it. time limit. Yeah. Normally, it is caused when you have multiple automations running on the same object. Yeah. So suppose you have a flow and a trigger uh, both on the same object. Then uh, uh, the the high chances of getting recursion as well. And also, like if it's a cross object, like suppose uh, you are running into a recursion, then also it happens. Like from object A, you are updating uh, uh, object B. On object B, you have a trigger that is uh, again updating object A. So that way, circular loop is uh, happening. And so because of that, also the CPU time limit errors you encounter. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. In the interest of time, like I will just take up the last question, which I think few people are not clear around uh, the DML insert restriction question. Yeah. So the question was like, suppose I want uh, there's a record and I want to make sure like when that code is executed, if the current person uh, or current user or logged in user has the access to delete or uh, do a DML on the uh, record, then only the DML statement should execute. 
so what happens assume like there is an account and uh, okay. suppose i i don't have access to update a, a account or insert an account then also by default to say so what it does like when you write the line insert account instance then the account record would get inserted and to make sure like this does not happen and the security is enforced then Salesforce so came up with insert as user keyword otherwise it works like uh, in the system mode and it does the uh, DM, uh, it does the DML. Okay. Uh, the another uh, question is around custom settings, custom metadata. Custom settings is actually used for uh, org specific configuration. Like suppose you have a configuration that would depend upon the org to org. It would vary from sandbox to sandbox, sandbox to production. The values are different. Depending upon the environment, the values might be different. Like consider the scenario of like an API URL. Like suppose you have, a, you have implemented Twilio or you have implemented say Google Maps. So in each of the environments, the URL might be different that you will be hitting in. Also, if there, if there is a requirement around that value can be changed as per different, different users, different users would put uh, different, different values for the same field. Taking into example, like suppose as a system admin, I would want to like, look at uh, 100 records at a time. But suppose a person A would want to have only 10 records. Uh, to be seen. So what I would do is I would have a custom setting and as per the user level, I can send it to you know, 10 at the default level, I get set it to 100. And while retrieving it, I might get different different values depending upon like uh, uh, with whom I want, want to retrieve. Like whether I want to retrieve the org level value or I want to retrieve the user level value. Okay. And custom metadata is used for storing fixed set of data. Like that would not change uh, in case of any org, like suppose this value would become constant from org to org, like consider it like your state value, like uh, we have say 37 states. So these 37 states would remain 37 only, like whether it is sandbox or production or uh, UAT, wherever it is, the value would remain same. So that is value we would like to keep it in the custom metadata. Uh, are all of you, uh, uh, best practices of LWC in brief. Uh, I would like to cover it in a separate session, I would say. Like already we are uh, over time. I hope like uh, the session was useful and I tried to cover whatever we can in whatever is possible in the given time constraint. So um, that's all.